the data types or the data structures in R. That's uh, what we want to look at. And the first one is what we refer to as vectors. I've written an example of a vector and I'm calling it apple. There are three colors of the apple. And I'm looking, looking at using the letter C to concatenate, that is to combine them together. And because these are strings or characters, I have to put them in double quotation marks. And so if I click my vector, I look at it, I see my vector as the first uh, word led as three characters. NCHR is the number of characters. Then we have green with five and yellow six. So if I just see, want to see what is in my vector apple, I just type apple there and it tells me I have three colors. That is how we write a vector. I could also write a vector of numbers. For example, I could say, just give me numbers from one to, to 10. And this is also a vector. So when I say NOS one, it tells me I have a set of numbers. The other type of uh, data type is a list. A list, uh, you have many different types of elements. So I can have four, I can put numbers one here, the numbers we got there. I could also put apple here. Uh, remember there's a difference putting apple under double quotes and apple without any quotes. Let's see the difference so that we understand what it means. Now, these are the items in my list. Number, starting with number one is the numbers, two, four, and five. Two is the word apple. Three is the word female. Four is my vector in line eight. And then five is my vector in line six. So when I put down apple, that is the name of my data set. But when I put apple under quotes, that is a word. So that's the difference between the two. The other one is matrices, dimensional. Uh, we can look at them. Here I have a sequence of numbers starting from two with a difference of three up to 11. So that is two, five, eight, and 11. So there are four numbers. I want to, it to give me a matrix that I'm calling M1 and I want by row to be false. The other one is also a matrix with letters A, B, C, D, E, F. So if I check M2, it tells me that is my matrix. And uh, from the matrix, you can do other things that will come later on. You could also get the determinant of M1. So if I try to get the determinant of M1, it tells me is uh, negative 18. I could solve M1, that is to get the inverse, and that is the inverse of that matrix. I could get the dimension of M1, dim of M1, and it tells me it's a 2 by 2. The other data type that we have is an array, and uh, I'm taking my matrix M1, and then I want it to be, so it's my M1 is two by two, so that's why dimension is two by two, and then it should repeat the matrix three times. So if I come and type array one, then it tells me it will repeat my M1 three times, two, eight, five, 11, one time, two times, and three times. Remember, instead of going down there in the console to type, I would just be putting my array there, so when I dub control enter there, then control enter, it gives me the output. I don't have to go to the console. I can decide to put the name there and then it will just read the name automatically. The other one is what we call the factors. Let's look at this. It's male and female. So there are two. So if I ask which class is F, it tells me it's a character. Uh, how many number of levels? It tells me there are zero. Why is it saying there are zero? Because it does not recognize my line 30 to be a factor. So I decide to do the same, but now I call it FF, and then I tell R that I want that data to be factor. So let's find out when I ask for the class, it tells me it's a factor. Now, if I came and asked how many levels are there, 
it tells me there are two because it's a male and female so here i could move this if for example i changed one of the names to be a small m so male capital m and male small m then my data will assume i have yes it's a factor but now it will assume i have three levels i have a male with capital m male with small m and also the female with capital f so it assumes i have three factors so this is the what we call categorical data in very simple statistical language there's another one there which you can check and it tells me there are four levels p u t and s those are the four levels apart from what we have looked at the final one we want to look at is what we call a data frame tabular form and i want to create one and this is how i would come up the agenda they are for their height their weight and the education level so instead of going down there to type i just put the file name here this is the file name i've used my name doesn't matter and that is how my data looks so these are the data types or the data structures that we find commonly in r and it's good to have an understanding on how they differ now before i conclude i want to look at uh, data sets that are normally available so i'm able to view them so what are these now if i come down there in the console and say data sets and i put double colon it gives me a list of all the data sets that are normally installed with the base r when you're installing your r software these data sets are also installed all this they are open for you to use and the data i'm putting up is what i call the hides data set I said I want to name my data IDs just like the way it is named in R. Then I want to view. To view is to see it. I can see it has four columns. It tells me showing one to ten of one fifty. It has five columns and one fifty entries. So there are three types of species uh, of this uh, iris. There is Setosa, there is Scala, and then the 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 Virginica. And they are giving the sepal length, the sepal wing, the petal length, and the petal wing. Now, when I say class, I want to see what uh, data structure is this. We talked about the data frames. That is the most common. We'll be talking about others later on. And the class is a data frame. I can tell it to show me the first few entries. I tell it to show me the head. And what happens, it will show me the first six entries of my data set. If I say to show me the tail, it will show me the last six entries of the data set. You can see the last one is 150, and that is what we have. And then finally, just to give you an introduction, is how to install one of the packages that is commonly used for data manipulation is what we call the tidyverse and they normally say install.packages and then we can also say dependencies is equals to true and so once you do that it will install for you tidyverse once it does install it you have to get the tidyverse from your system and bring it to our studio we use the library and this is what we have just done we have looked at the tail and the head what we did not look at was the summary. So let me just briefly look at the summary of the of the uh, iris data set, the sample length, the wing, each one, and the species. Each one of them has 50 entries. And uh, these are the summary statistics. Summary statistics are the descriptive statistics as they are commonly known. I'm sure you love these videos. If you do, please subscribe.